بسم الله والحمد لله ونصلي ونسلم على رسول الله وعلى آله وأصحابه أجمعين اللهم علمنا ما ينفعنا وانفعنا بما علمتنا وزدنا علما وأصلح لنا شأننا كله ولا تكلنا إلى أنفسنا طرفة عين مرحبا بالإخوة والأخوات so we welcome all the brothers and sisters to the beginning of our study of the text of Kitab al-Tawheed by the uh, Shaykh al-Islam wal-Imam Muhammad ibn Abdul Wahhab rahmatullahi alayhi So just to um, clarify what we are going to be studying then most of you should have the handout that was made available so we will be going through each chapter uh, ayah by ayah hadith by hadith and then we will be doing the sharh al-kalimat which mentions on it sharh al-kalimat which is a an explanation of the words that appear and once we do the sharh al-kalimat then sometimes we will take what is known uh, from so these the explanation of this of this book and the explanation of the words are taken from two books they are taken from uh, al-mulakhas Sharhi Kitab al Tawheed, which is a concise explanation of Kitab al Tawheed by Sheikh Saleh ibn Fawzan. And the other one is a famous book <coughs> by Sheikh al Qarawi. And they are very short, concise explanations for the student who's beginning his study of Kitab al-Tawheed. So when we take the Sharh al-Kalimat, we will also um, take the Munasabat al-Ayah lil-Bab or Munasabat al-Hadith lil-Bab. So Sheikh Fawzan in his explanations, he will always mention, he will always mention um, where does for example, the statement "Wama khalaqtu al-jinn wal insa illa liyabudun." He will mention <clears throat> how this ayah fits in with the chapter of Kitab al-Tawheed. So, when we study each chapter, we study the meaning of the ayah, and then we study the reason why the author has placed this ayah in this chapter. And then sometimes we will take al-ma'ani al-ijmali which is a concise explanation of the ayah, which, which are very short also. But our main point is to study what is on the notes. So then after each um, ayah or each hadith or each narration, at the bottom you see this which says at-ta'liqat, which literally means notes. So, and then it has a large blank space. So the notes are for you to take in Brother Yasser's, um, his lesson. So we will study the, the main body of the text. And then in his lesson, he may go into more, or he will go into more detail about the ayah. But he won't go into uh, extreme depth in detail about the ayah, because the main focus is, is to just understand uh, the book, how the author, rahmatullahi alayhi, intended. So with that, the, then Sheikh Fawzan, rahimahullah, uh, hafidhahullah, you can say rahimahullah also, it's still a dua. Then he gives a small, abridged version of the profile of the author. 
So he says, who was Sheikh Muhammad ibn Abdul Wahab ibn Sulaiman ibn Ali. That he was Sheikh Muhammad ibn Abdul Wahab, or the son of Abdul Wahab, who was the son of Sulaiman, who was the son of Ali. Min Alin Min Ali Min Kabilati Bani Tamim. So he was from a noble family from the tribe of Bani Tamim, which is famous. And he says, Wa Imam Dawati as Salafiya fi Najd Ghairiha. That he was the Imam of the Dawah of Salafiya in the region of Najd and other than that. And we'll go into where the region of Najd is a little later. He says, Wulida fi. So he was he was born in the city of Riyana, which is close to the city of Ar Riyadh, in the year 1115. He memorized the Quran when he was young, and he studied with his father, who was a judge in the in the city of Al Riyana in its time, and he studied with all with uh, other than him from this famous scholars of Najd and he studied from uh, scholars from Medina and the city of Ahsa and in Basra in Iraq and he ob obtained by way of that a great uh, deal a, a great amount of knowledge which caused him and led on to him to establish his blessed da'wah and this was in a time where innovations and superstitions were, were widely spread throughout the ummah and like for example seeking blessings from the graves trees stones or rocks so he rahimahullah he he stood and he started to invite the people to the correct belief al aqida al sahiha and ikhlas al ibadah lillahi wahda and to be sincere in the worship of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala alone and he authored many books and from the most famous of them of those books is this book kitab al tawhid and it has been widely accepted uh, or greatly accepted by by the by the scholars of islam and the students of islam and they have played or they have paid um, a great deal of importance in studying teaching and explaining the book and it is a book that is filled with many great benefits and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala he has benefited a, a vast amount of his creation by way of this book and he says وَقَدْ بَقِيَ الشَّيْخِ أَنْ طِيلَةَ حَيَاتِهِ مُعَلِّمًا so the shaykh he the rest of his life or for the for the entirety of his life he spent teaching the people at tawheed up until allah subhanahu wa ta'ala um, took his soul in a dar'iya in a region called a dar'iya uh, which is close to in to the city of al riyadh in the year 1206 and many of the major scholars were produced uh, or were from his students and many of the uh, great uh, imams of the da'wah so he says so may allah give him much reward and make paradise his final resting place
Okay, so we get to the main text. So we'll start the main text. So the author, Rahimahullah, Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim, Kitab al-Tawheed. Okay, so for those who are studying in our Arabic classes, then they will most likely get more benefit from these lessons. But inshallah, Allah, maybe that Allah will benefit you even if you don't have uh, much of a great understanding of the Arabic language. But this is what these lessons are focused and what they are for. So Kitab al-Tawheed, we know from our lessons that Kitab is mudaf and al-Tawheed is what? You could answer on the chat if you like. Yeah, mudaf on ilay. Kitab al-Tawheed. So which means the book of Tawheed. So Sharh al-Kalimat, again, Sharh means explanation. Just make it a bit bigger. Al-Kalimat is the nouns or the, the words. Again, mudaf, mudaf on ilay. So the firstly, Al-Kitab is, so with this sentence, Al-Kitab Mastaru. So Al-Kitab, the book, the word Al-Kitab, the book, is the Mastar. Mastar in the Arabic language is referred to as the root word. So you'll see this many times when scholars explain words. They will always give you the the Mastar of the, of the word or the or They'll give you the mustar of the word, i.e. the root word, which is usually comes from a verb. So al-kitab is mustaru kataba. It's the root word of the verb, which is kataba, which means to write. Bima'na, which gives the meaning of jama'a. As we know, jama'a means what? Yeah, to collect. Yeah, jama'a means to collect or to gather. Now, wal kitabatu bil qalam, and writing. He says wal kitaba bil qalam, and writing with a pen is we call it jam'u al huruf. So when a person writes with a pen and he writes a sentence, jam'u al huruf. He's gathering together uh, letters. Well, kalimat and words. Okay, so just very simple explanation. So the word kitab, and then at tawheed is mustaru is the is the root word of wahada. So wahada means what? Now, to make, so if you were to, uh, if there were many things separate and you gathered them all together, you make tawheed of those things, i.e. you bring them all together and you make them one. So, mustaru wahada, to make one. A ja'alahu wahidan, a. So this a, you'll see this many times in the books and the scholars will You'll hear them constantly use this this term a. So this a is known as a tafsiri. A tafsiri. We know tafsir like tafsir Quran. Explanation a tafsiri. A tafsiri you. I. So when they say a, when you hear a scholar say you mention something, and then you'll say a. It means now he I it means and now he's about to give you an explanation of what he's just previously said. So uh, so he says Mustar Wahada A meaning explanation Ja'alahu Wahidan I he makes it one. So Wahada 
literally means ja'alahu wahidan so th this is how we should memorize these words in our heads we shouldn't uh, if someone was to say to you ma ma'na wahada you you think you say ay ja'alahu wahidan so we say i he makes it one now it's one of the best ways to learn arabic is by learning is with arabic itself now as uh, one of my teachers that if he would see you or if he saw any student with a dictionary he would take it off him and throw it in the bin and he would say uh, a person who uses a dictionary uh, in his own language like from arabic to whatever language you know he says the example of this person is like someone who's walking on the spot he goes where is he going he's going nowhere he goes but if, if you learn arabic from arabic he goes then a person you'll find that his understanding and his uh, implementation of the of the language is far greater than any everybody else's because you understand the words through arabic so when you when you hear an arabic sentence a person who uses a dictionary you'll find that he he is slow in his understanding so when he hears it he starts translating in his head in order for it to make sense but a person who learns arabic through arabic that he just hears the sentence and he just understand he just understands it for what it is so wahada ay ja'alahu wahidan okay so here we have ja'alahu wahidan i he makes it one we can explain this part as well as ja'alahu wahidan which will benefit bit benefit us in the ayah after it so if we say ja'alahu wahidan okay are we all aware with um الفعل والفاعل والمفعول به okay so in order to understand this we need to understand a basic sentence so we'll just go through the sentence quickly so if we could say for example أكل okay if this is simple for you then just have patience أكل محمد so we find this uh, in uh, many sentences that they comprise of a verb so we say akala is al-fi'l is the verb and then muhammadun is what is known as al-fa'il in the sentence, the dua. Okay, question. How do we know that Muhammad is the fa'il in the sentence? Naam. So, ahsant. So, whenever we look at a sentence like this, so it says we have three words in the sentence. Akala means to eat. Muhammad means Muhammad, the name, and a samak means a fish. So in the sentence, someone ate someone. Someone ate someone. And the way we recognize who is who's the one who done the eating, i.e., who's the one that carried out this this verb. Akala. So we always look to the tashkil, the vowels at the end of the words and it, we will be able to identify so it, it, these give us clues of who done what so if we want to know who done the eating then the one who has the dhamma is the one who carried out the action always as someone said in the chat marfu that he's marfu marfu means he has a dhamma either one dhamma or dhammatan and then the, so we've identified Muhammad is the fa'il why he is the one who has the dhamma 
No, no, no. It doesn't. It doesn't always come after. Someone says it always comes after the fi'l, but that's not. That's not right. Sometimes they can be jumbled up. Okay. Um, and then the the one that the action has been done on, which is called al maf'ulu bihi, al maf'ulu bihi. The one that the action's been done upon, he will always take what? As is as is as we can see clearly, it takes the fatha, i.e., it is mansub. Okay, so if we if we quickly want to know who done what, we look at the the harakat what the words end with and this is why when we teach arabic we play uh, a lot of importance to the endings of the words because we want to know who done what so and then the the most famous example is when allah says in the quran وَكَلَّمَ اللَّهُ مُوسَى تَكْلِيمًا وَكَلَّمَ اللَّهُ مُوسَى تَكْلِيمًا Okay, the, so the scholars, they use this example a lot. وَكَلَّمَ اللَّهُ مُوسَى تَكْلِيمًا And Allah, so in the ayah, who spoke to who? So again, وَكَلَّمَ اللَّهُ مُوسَى تَكْلِيمًا So كَلَّمَ means to talk, to speak to. نعم Ahsant. So it's Allah spoke to Musa. How do we know that Allah spoke to Musa? Because Allah is the one who is marfu' Lafdul Jalala uh, is marfu' in the ayah. He has the Dhamma. So we saw Allah is the one who spoke to Musa. Now, so they use this example. Why? Because from the people of innovation, Ahlul Bid'ah, they try to uh, negate the speech of Allah. So they would say, they say, no, 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 Allah says in the Quran, وَكَلَّمَ اللَّهُ مُوسَى تَكْلِيمًا But the real meaning is, وَكَلَّمَ اللَّهَ مُوسَى تَكْلِيمًا They say that the real meaning is that Musa spoke to Allah. Why? Because they want to negate the attribute of speaking to Allah. Because they say, if you do that, you are likening Allah to his creation. Now, yeah, they say, Allah la yatakallam. billah. Okay. So, a ja'alahu wahidan. So here in this sentence, going back to this sentence, ja'alahu wahidan. Here we can see that the Ja'ala is the fi'l, is the verb. The hu here, al-dhamir al-muttasil, lil-ghaib. So it is a, what do you call it, a connected pronoun? Yeah, so that is the fa'il, the hu, and then wahidan is the maf'ul bihi. So he makes it one. And then he says, wal-murad bihi. And this is another word we should familiarize ourselves with because it's used a lot from the scholars. Al murad bihi huna. Al murad, ma ma'ana al murad bihi? Naam, al murad bihi is what is intended by it. I. إِجَعَلَهُ وَاحِدًا الْمُرَادُ بِهِ هُنَا The intent بِهِ with the word Tawheed هُنَا is as we all should know إِفْرَادُ اللَّهِ بِالْعِبَادَةِ is إِفْرَادُ اللَّهِ بِالْعِبَادَةِ which is إِفْرَادُ اللَّهِ مضاف مضاف إليه is singling Allah out بِالْعِبَادَةِ in worship so when we look at this wahada a ja'alahu wahidan to make it one so just imagine we have all these acts of worship which are many from tawakkul raja khawf dhibh uh, salah 
dua, all these forms of worship. We gather them all together and we make them one for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Ifradullahi bil ibadah, mahabba, etc. Okay. Ahsantum. So we move on. Wa qawlillahi ta'ala. Wa qawlillahi ta'ala. And the author says, Wa qawlillahi ta'ala. So the question, why is it wa qawlillahi and not wa qawlullahi? Why is it majroor? Why does it have a kasra? My PDF froze then. Naam, so we have a few, mashallah. Wa qawlillahi ta'ala. So we are continuing from Kitab al Tawheed. So this is Mudaf, Mudafun ilay. So again, as the Prophet said, Ma'atuf ala al Mudafun ilay. So this is Mudafun ilay. And we are carrying on. Wa qawlillahi ta'ala. So this is another, it's Mudafun ilay from the title. Wa qawlillahi ta'ala. And his statement. And the st- or the statement of Allah at uh, Taala, the Most High. وما خلقت الجن والإنس إلا ليعبدون. وما خلقت الجن والإنس إلا ليعبدون. نعم. So even most Muslims who don't know Arabic have memorized the statement of Allah Subhanahu wa Taala. وَمَا خَلَقْتُ الْجِنَّ وَالْإِنسَ إِلَّا لِيَعْبُدُونَ So briefly we know that the ma is So what would the ma be in the ayah? As we have two types of ma we, No we don't have two, we have many types of ma So yeah, good So it's ma and nafiyah Or nafiyah someone said Ma and nafiyah the ma of negation. Because we have different types of ma. We have ma al istifham, ma al So ma al nafia, khalaqtu al jinnah. So again, this statement, khalaqtu al jinnah wal insa, is this as what we've just explained up here. Akala Muhammadun as samaka fi'il fa'il maf'ulun bihi. And here, ja'alahu wahidan. So we have khalaqa is the verb, al-fi'l, to is the fa'il, ya'ud ila Allahi tabaraka wa ta'ala, which goes back to Allah, wa ma khalaqtu. Al-jinn maf'oolun bihi, wal-ins al-maf'oolun bihi, al-thani, aw ma'atuf. So here we have the two maf'oolun bihi, jinn and ins. Illa, okay, illa is, as some of the mentioned, it's called harfu hasar. Harfu hasar. Hasar in the Arabic language, i.e. it's restricted. Harfu hasar. So, for example, you could say, uh, if someone was to say, Ya akhi, akelt al fawakiha. If someone wants to say to you, oh brother, you ate the fruit. You would say, لا ما أكلت إلا الموز. You would say, no, I didn't eat إلا الموز, except for the, for the banana. So here in Allah's statement, وما خلقت الجن والإنسة. So again, we take the meaning, وما نفي, and I did not create. الجنة. Wal insa illa except. So we translate uh, except. Illa liya'budun. And then the lamb in the ayah is what? What is known as lamb. Lamul illa or ta'leel. Naam. Lamul illa or ta'leel. Same thing. Lamul illa. 
ay illa li'abudun so al illa is like for the reason or the cause li'abudun so ya'budun so if we look at the ayah and i did not create the jinn and the mankind illa it's only for and the reason li li'abudun so that they should worship and then why does the ayah end with it with a kasra as we know that it's usually a fatha but why is there a kasra in the ayah and why does it end naam ahsantum yeah so so the asl of it is liya'budun liya'budu ni which is ya al mutakallim the the ya shows us shows us the person who is speaking except or for the reason and the wisdom to worship liya'buduni so the ya is taken away and it's just replaced with the kasra to show us that the ya is there as many times in the Arabic language, they will take away uh, letters and just repra- replace them with a fatha kasra dhamma, but it's there. Illa li'abudun. Mumtaz. Tayyib, so then, sharh al-mufradat, we come to the, or al-kalimat, explanation of the, of the words. Khalaqtu al-khalqu. هو إبداع الشيء من غير أصل ولا احتذاء نعم so he says خلقت I created he says الخلق that the creation is إبداع الشيء meaning what نعم أحسنت الكسرة تدل على الياء المحذوفة نعم Naam. So the creation is to ibda'u shay. Is it, yeah, to to make or to create a shay something min ghayri aslin that has no origin. I making something out of nothing. We so. Wala ihtida ihtida is like a copy of something else. Okay. So this so the, the aqil, the one who has an intellect, just Allah's attribute of being a creator is enough for us to uh, submit to his worship. As he's the one alone, uh, he stands out from from everything, being that he is the only creator. As if we if we cast our minds to the the ayah in Surah uh, Baqarah, uh, which is mentioned in Usulu Thalatha, which is what, what anybody know what I'm indicating to, and the Tafsir of Ibn Kathir. So, yes, yeah, so ibda is, as is mentioned, like to create, make, invent. Ahsant. So the ayah, which is the first command in the, the first command in the book of Allah in Surah Baqarah, Ya ayyuhal nasu ibudu rabbakum, O mankind, worship your Lord. And then Allah subhanahu wa taala goes on to explain why we should be worshiping Him, Alladhi khalaqakum. The one who khalaqakum, that is his first uh, proof and reason why we should be worshipping him. Uh, he, the one who created you, وَالَّذِينَ مِنْ قَبْلِكُمْ And those before you, لَعَلَّكُمْ تتقون. And then he goes on to say, الَّذِي جَعَلَ لَكُمُ الْأَرْضَ فِرَاشًا وَالسَّمَاءَ بِنَاءً وَأَنْزَلَ 
من السماء ماء to the end of the ayah and then Ibn Kathir he he comments on this ayah by saying al khaliq li hadhihi al ashya huwa al mustahiq lil ibada so the the intelligent one reading the ayah that Ibn Kathir says the the creator of all of those things he is the one who's most deserved of your worship okay then we carry on to al jinn alamun mustatirun anil anbar so alam is a creation mustatir which are hidden mustatirun so it's a creation that is hidden and from al anbar which is the plural of nadar from sight i we can't see them so everybody understands that al ins hum banu adam they are the ma ma'na banu naam banu is the jam of ibn we have abna or we have banu as in this uh, the statement we hear constantly ya bani israel ya Bani. Naam. Why is it changed from Banu to Bani? Because it's now Mansub, because Banu Israel is Mudaf and Mudafun Ili. That's why Allah says, Ya Bani Israel. Like those who are in the Arabic classes, we would say, Ya Imam al Mastidi. That when, a, when you call someone, whose name or title is mudaf and mudafun ilay then the mudaf will take a fatha when it's preceded by ya harfun nida anyway so liya'budun to worship me al-ibadatu fi al-lugha so now he explains al-ibadah fi al-lugha Worship in the language is known as At-Tadallul Wal-Khudu At-Tadallul bima'na Yeah, to humbleness, to be, to be humble At-Tadallul Wal-Khudu Is Naam, submissive So the the term al ibada in the Arabic language is is that a person humbles himself and he submits himself to that which he is worshiping. Wa sharan and so we hear again you'll hear the scholars say fil many times in the language it means because we can't understand what it means except by understanding what the terms mean in the Arabic language. So they always have two different meanings usually. So in the language in the language of the Arabs, it has a meaning, and then washar'an, and in the legislation, in the terms of the, in terms of the religion, ibadah is ismun jami'un. So ismun jami'un is what. So we know what jama'a means because we we took it above jama'a jamul kalimat. Jami'. No, no. So ismun jami'. Naam. So when when a word, when you hear the term ismun jami', and then the plural jawami', as the Prophet said, I have been given jawami'ul kalim. Jawami'ul kalim. I. So ismun jami' is a a word that has a great meaning i.e. a comprehensive word or a comprehensive term. So as we know, the Prophet ﷺ would say small things that had uh, immense and great meanings. Um, so con- yes, yeah, so con- concise words that have huge meanings. Um, so we would see small hadith 
that may be consi uh, comprised of like two, three, four words and scholars authoring books just on the explanation of just one statement of the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Ismun Jami'ah. So the term Ibadah is a Ismun Jami'ah. It's a comprehensive term. I, it's just one word, but it has a great meaning. And the meaning is Ismun Jami' Lima Yuhibbuhu Allah wa Yarda. For that, Lima, a Lilladi, so this ma is Mosula. Lilladi Yuhibbuhu Allah, that which Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala loves, wa Yarda, and He is pleased with, Min al Aqwal. So Aqwal is Jamru, Awl, statements, Al A'mal. Uh, we all know Jamu Amal Al-Zahira wal Batina. So statements and actions that are Zahira Mamana Zahira which are apparent, i.e., we can see them. We see that we can see, oh so obviously here with aqwal i so either we can see them by writing or we hear them now min al aqwal al zahira wal a'mal al zahira and statements that are apparent and we can see them wal batina and those that are hidden like for example uh, actions of the heart etc Naam. So in the next lesson with uh, our brother uh, Yasser Abdurrahman, then you will get to go in, into more depth and make sure you print out the file, a ta'liqat, notes, and then you make your notes in the space, inshallah. So I think we got time to do another one. وَقَوْلِهِ تَعَالَى So again, وَقَوْلِهِ The same as the first one. وَقَوْلِهِ It's مُضَافٌ uh, إِلَيْهِ وَقَوْلِهِ تَعَالَى وَلَقَدْ بَعَثْنَا فِي كُلِّ أُمَّةٍ رَسُولًا أَنِ اعْبُدُ اللَّهَ وَاجْتَنِبُ الطَّاغُوتِ So incidentally, the, the book um, المَلَخَّص في شرح كتاب التوحيد by Sheikh Fawzan after each ayah he ends after the explanation of the words and the sharh al-ijmali so we'll take we'll quickly take the sharh al-ijmali so al-sharh al-ijmali or al-ma'na al-ijmali so he says al-ma'na Al Ijmali, which is like a concise understanding of the ayah. So he says, Anna Allah Ta'ala Akhbara Annahu Ma Khalaq Al Insa Wal Jinna Illa Li Ibadatihi. So in this ayah, he says, Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala has informed that He has not created Al Ins and Al Jinn. Illa li ibadatihi, except for the worship of him. Fahiya bayanun lil hikma fi khalqihim. And it is a clarification. So this ayah for us, it clarifies lil hikma fi khalqihim. It clarifies the wisdom behind Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala creating them, i.e., jinn and ins. Falam yurid minhum. ما تريده السادة من عبيدها من الإعانة لهم بالرزق والإطعام. And he says, and he doesn't want from them, i.e., from the jinn and the ins, that which, like, uh, uh, like humans who are masters of uh, slaves, that they want something from their slaves, i.e., they hire or they buy slaves in order. For them to work for them and to gain benefit from them from their slaves. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, uh, He doesn't want that from his servants. Just so you have slave masters, they they will own slaves. 
in order to get benefit from them. So Allah's slaves, He doesn't want anything, He doesn't want anything like that from them. Innama arad al maslaha lahum. That indeed Allah only wants that which is beneficial for His servants. So, so again, subhanAllah, the, the honor and the izzah of worshipping Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, that it is for our benefit and not Allah's benefit. And he, he says, Munasabatu, which is very important, Munasabatu al ayah lil bab, how the, this ayah, how it fits in with this chapter. He says, Annaha tadullu ala wujub al tawheed. So I think next time I'll add these to the notes. He says that it indicates the compulsory or the necess the necess the necessity of a tawheed. So Alladhi huwa ifrad Allahi bil ibadah, which is singling Allah out bil ibadah with worship. لِأَنَّهُ مَا خَلَقَ الْجِنِّ وَالْإِنسِ إِلَّا لِأَجْلِ ذَلِكِ Because he did not create jinn and ins except for that reason. Now, so you can see, subhanAllah, the, the uslub of the shaykh. Shara'an means legislative, i.e. its meaning in the religion. So we can see like the concise words of, of a Sheikh Fawzan. So even though he has the ability to, to speak about the, the ayah for hours and hours and uh, obtain many great benefits, but the ayah is to be understood in, in a simple, in a simple and its intended meaning. وقوله ولقد بعثنا في كل أمة رسولا أن يعبد الله واجتنب الطاغوت. So I reached the statement of Allah subhanahu wa taala the Most High in Surah Al-Nahl, Ayah thirty six. شرح الكلمات. So we'll do the explanation of the words first. Okay, so he doesn't explain laqad, which we'll explain. So this term qad, now this term qad, uh, so what, what we see this term qad in many ayahs. For example, قَدْ أَفْلَحَ الْمُؤْمِنُونَ So what does this, what does this term قَدْ mean? نَعْمَ أَحْسَنْتَ تَوْكِيدْ So it has two meanings. So generally the scholars say قَدْ that نَعْمْ certainly. So قَدْ when we see it come before so here the term ba'athna is fi'l madi it's fi'l madi yeah it's a past tense so when we see qad when when we see qad idha dakhala ala al madi that when we see it come before a uh, past tense that it gives us a ben the benefit of tawkid a tawkid so here for example ba'athna is a past tense so Allah says walaqad ba'athna that certainly we uh, and then what the what the uh, what the word means which we'll take in a minute and in the ayah qad aflaha al mu'minun that indeed the believers are aflaha, have succeeded. And they say, قَدْ إِذَا دَخَلَ الْمُضَارِعِ 
tufidu al ihtimal wa shak and they say someone qad comes before a present tense then it can benefit its benefit is uh, doubt and um ihtimal ihtimal is like maybe so for example I could say to some, someone say atadhhab ila makkah if someone asked me atadhhab ila makkah are you going to makkah I could say qad adhhabu bukra I so I may go tomorrow qad adhhabu is fi'l madari' so it's like maybe but then again sometimes qad when it, when it, uh, in certain ayahs it comes or it comes before fi'l mudari' and it does it has the emphasis of tawkid anyway but it, we're saying in general there, there are always yeah it depends on the context accent now so here and we have laqad what is the lam ma hiya lam So the lamb also here in the ayah gives us the benefit of tawkid. So here in the ayah we have two emphases. We have the lamb and we have the qad. Wala qad ba'athna. So we ba'athna ay arsalna. So and indeed arsalna. We have sent. في كل أمة كل أمة كل طائفة من قرن وجيل من الناس. So this is كل طائفة كل كل أمة means every group وقرن ما معنى قرن Um, so generation, yeah, century. Gen so uh, as as the Prophet said, "Khairun nasi qarni." The best of uh, people or the best of generations, qarni is my qarni, my generation. Wajil. So jil can mean time period, century, generation, also. Min nas from the people. Rasulan. So, وَلَقَدْ بَعَثْنَا فِي كُلِّ أُمَّةٍ رَسُولًا So indeed, we have sent to every time and every people and every in every century, رَسُولًا A messenger. So this is الرسول, the messenger, مَنْ أُوحِيَ إِلَيْهِ بِشَرْعٍ مَنْ He is the one, he is one. أُوحِيَ إِلَيْهِ Bishar'in that a legislation is revealed to him. He receives re revelation and he receives a legislation. Wa umira and he is ordered to call the people to it. Now, so we get uh, the the difference between Rasul and Nabi. Is that the Rasul, he is given a legislation or a book which is new. And he calls the people to that. And a Nabi, a prophet, that he calls the people to the previous Rasul. Naam. So he calls the people to a previous Rasul. So he, so you have a messenger, a messenger, he comes with a book and a new legislation and then when he passes and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sends a Nabi the Nabi will call to the previous uh, legislation of the previous Rasul up until a new Rasul or a, a new legislation is sent now what Rasul he says Ar-Rasul Huna which is a, a very nice point 
الرسول in the ayah نكرة it's singular or indefinite we know نكرة and معرفة نكرة and معرفة so we have definite and indefinite so the word rasul in the ayah is نكرة i.e. just means a messenger not the messenger نكرة so we say الرسول هنا نكرة تعم جميع الرسول which encompasses or includes جميع الرسول all of the messengers نعم someone said a common noun so that's so for example when the prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم said كل بدعة ضلالة بدعة كل بدعة ضلالة that he says every bid'ah is dalalatun. So here the scholars say bid'ah, the Prophet said bid'ah as in nakira. Ta'ummu jami'ul bid'ah. So the word nakira, so the word bid'ah here, the, when the Prophet said kullu bid'atin, he used the, 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 the term bid'ah as nakira because it will. It, um, it will include every form of innovation, every form, and all of it is ضلالة. كل بدعة ضلالة. So the prophet, so he says, الرسول هنا نكرة تعم جميع الرسل. نعم. And then أعبد الله, أعبد الله. So again, we have فعل أمر. And then الله. لفظ الجلالة مفعول به So to worship Allah أي أفردوه بالعبادة So the term أعبد الله It means single him out with worship واجتنبوا الطاغوت اجتنبوا واجتنبوا أي أتركوا اجتنبه which we know means to refrain and remain away from something أي أتركوا leave leave off وفارقوا again just means to leave or like be remove yourself from نعم yes as someone said uh, that the the messenger of Allah sallallahu alaihi wasallam he was he was a prophet and a messenger. Naam. As they say, كل رسول نبي. As every every rasul was a prophet, but not every prophet is a rasul. So that's how we understand it. كل رسول نبي or كل رسول نبي وليس كل نبي رسول أو رسولا نعم الطاغوت مشتق so we see this word مشتق many times as well مشتق means derived من الطغيان so the word الطاغوت فارق means to uh, distance yourself from remove yourself from something to separate. Naam, at-taghut. So the ayah, let's go through it. And indeed, we have sent in every generation or time a messenger. An-i'budullaha, uh, so his call to the people was, u'budullaha, worship Allah, wajtanibu, ay utruku wa fariqu at-taghut. So, and to remain and separate yourselves and stay clear of At-Taghut. So, At-Taghut is taken from the word at which is وَهُوَ مُجَاوَزَةُ الْحَدْ which is going beyond the boundary. Mujawaza is when you go past something and Al-Had is a boundary. مُجَاوَزَةُ الْحَدْ So for example, in uh, when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala talks about when he flooded the people of Nuh, he says, إِنَّا لَمَّا 
تغى الماء إنا لما تغى الماء حملناكم في الجارعة وحملناهم في الجارعة في الجارعة so Allah says إنا لما تغى الماء when the water تغى أي it went past أي when the water built up and it flooded we carried them <coughs> مشتق من التغيان وهو مجاوزة الحد فكل <coughs> Naam, so, sorry, I'm just keeping an eye on the chat. That's why I pause sometimes. فكل ما عبد من دون الله. So he says here, so everything that is worshipped besides Allah, وهو راض بالعبادة, which is very important, and he is happy with that worship. Naam, so everything or anyone. Who is worshipped besides Allah, and He is happy that the people worship Him. فَهُوَ تَعْوُتْ Then He would be called a تَعْوُتْ. Then He is a تَعْوُتْ. نعم. أَوَرَأْتُ تَعْوُتْ مَنْ The head of the تَعْوُتْ are who is who. نعم. الشيطان. الشيطان. إبليس. So a ta'ut is something, somebody that is worshipped and they are happy with being worshipped. <clears throat> so, وَلَقَدْ بَعَثْنَا فِي كُلِّ أُمَّةٍ رَسُولًا أَنْ اعْبُدُوا اللَّهَ وَاجْتَنِبُوا الطَّاغُوتِ طيب, فنقف هنا. So we'll have to stop there. So the... Our brother Yasser Abdurrahman, he will begin his uh, lessons from next week, not tomorrow, from next week. So by next week, we should have completed the chapter. So Alhamdulillah, so we'll always be one week ahead of him. So it gives you time to revise all of the, uh, to, to memorize the ayahs and to understand. So even, even if you don't, even if you're not well versed in Arabic, and you don't really understand the rules, then inshallah at least you can memorize the ayah, which is easy for people to do generally. And you will generally understand the, what each word means, even, even if you don't understand the grammar. Yes, so to memorize the ayahs is the bare minimum, okay, for everybody. That's the bare minimum. For those who have dhawqun fil lughah, who who have studied Arabic before, or they have, or they are students of Arabic, then you should be memorizing the terminologies for the words as well. So I would say as homework, memorize the first ayah and memorize <clears throat> the definition of ibadah. And then in the next chapter, Memorize the ayah. That's the bare minimum. No, a, a ta'ut can be someone who lived and is living. Five tips for memorizing. Uh, then we'll go through that another time. Um, I have to, I suppose to have left five minutes ago. I have another lesson. Jazakumullahu uh, khayran. Wa sallallahu ala nabiyyina Muhammad. Wa ala alihi wa ashabihi wa ashabihi ajma'een. Wa salamu alaykum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Sorry we don't get to answer all the questions. But inshallah if you can answer or ask on the telegram and we can answer them there. بإذن الله